But if you'll take to heart what the Bible says and know whatever God says about you, that's who you are. But we need to start speaking blessing so we can receive a blessing. We're called to make sure that people understand that God is alive. God chose his seed very carefully. He said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Isn't that something to be chosen of God? Hello and welcome to Wherever He Leads. I'm Tommy Roberts and it is my great pleasure to uh, have you in the audience today as we break the word of God open and just study it and learn from it and get into it. I enjoy studying the word of God and preaching the Word of God and living the Word of God, uh, living by faith. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. On our last session, we talked just a little bit. We introduced you to some of the concepts of living by faith, and I just threw a couple things at you. I'm also today going to uh, pick up uh, from the fifth chapter of the book of Mark, St. Mark. So if you have your Bible, you can, you can get that. If you don't have a Bible, you need a second to get it. Why don't you go ahead and get yourself ready, and let's get into the Word of God together today. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and pray, as always, inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit into our gathering. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you with an expectation of you. We put a demand on heaven. And when I say demand, Father, I mean as if we would turn the faucet open on. We know there's a water source, and so we turn the faucet open. We know there's a power source, so we plug into the socket. Today, that is the demand that we refer to. We know that you're there and that you're real and the heavenly things are freely given unto us, so we tap into it by our faith. Our faith is what hooks us up to the power source of heaven. And so we use it today as we open your word to get revelation. Holy Spirit, we thank you for granting unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. In all things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's turn back to math, uh, excuse me, Mark, the fifth chapter. And I want to see if I can go ahead and just get back to what we were talking about on our last session. In our last session, I introduced you to uh, a almost a scene or scenario in the fifth chapter here where we see several things that happen. Uh, and many of us focus on the demon possession, possessed man who the demons were cast out of. And I submit to you, though, although that was extremely important, and certainly for, uh, for the importance of the man. I mean, you know, when he went back telling everybody, he, he wanted to join up with Jesus. And Jesus told him, no, go and tell them, tell your people about what great things the Lord has done for you. And the Bible goes on to say that he published that or he announced it to everybody. So he was blessed. But that's not the real essence of what we see in the fifth chapter of the book of Mark, according to what I believe. What I believe is that Jesus was giving uh, the Lord, the Father, was giving us a glimpse into how he wants to deal with his people. And Jesus deals with not only the gentleman who was possessed, but he deals with, and we said this last time, there's several different characters here in this, in this scene. One is Jesus himself, obviously. One was the man who was healed. He, we see him almost exiting stage left, so to speak. We see his disciples there, his disciples there. One we didn't mention last time is the throng of people. There's, the, there's that body of people there. Now we have Jairus who has come, and Jairus was actually the one who approached Jesus, and this woman with the issue of blood was the last one that we talked about. She came up and interrupted what Jesus was doing, or at least that's what it looked like to the natural eye. But I submit to you that faith always sees beyond what is natural and what is right in front of it. Faith has the ability to see into the spirit realm. And the Bible says that we being people of faith, Romans 4, 16, you know, we call those things that be not as though they were. You know, the Bible talks about God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. If our father does that, he expects us to be able to do that. Now, some would say, well, you know, you're just one of those faith preachers. Yeah, yeah, I am. But I believe that the Bible is, is permeated with faith from the beginning to the end of it. And so without faith, I, I know the writer of Hebrews says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And ultimately, what I want to do is I want to be pleasing to God. And so if people think me strange, that's fine. They can think whatever they want. But I'm strangely blessed. I'm strangely prosperous. I'm strangely healthy. You know, I'm strangely, people think I'm younger than I am. I don't know why they think that, you know, but they think I'm younger than I am. So I attribute all of that to God and living a life of faith that is pleasing to him. So let's pick up here and I'm going to read some today from uh, another translation that I have called the uh, Expanded Bible. And I'm going to read uh, verse, let's, let's start at verse uh, 25 
among them was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, a chronic disorder. She had suffered very much from many doctors and had spent all the money she had, but instead of improving, she, she was getting worse. When the woman heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his coat. She thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Now, I, I reason why I open this is because a lot of people think that if I just think something, it's going to happen. The, the King James Version clearly tells us and Amplified tells us that she said. And I'm submitting to you that you have to say, you have to begin to say in line with God's word what it is you believe God will do for you. Because a lot of people just go under the notion that all I have to do is be born again and then life is great. Life will be great from then on. But that's not true. I know many people who are born again and are miserable. I know many people who claim to be born again are, are sick and broken and, 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 and impoverished, homeless, all these. But I know many people who are not. And so what begins to be the distinguishing factor between those who, who are, and everybody claims to be born again, and those who are living in a life, life that God has called us to live, which according to John 10, you know, is the abundant life, and those who are not. I believe it's their faith. I believe it's their faith. So I'm going to submit some things to you again. Let's keep going. It says instantly, verse 29, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed from her disease. At once, Jesus felt power go out from him. The King James Version says virtue. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? His followers said, look at how many people are pushing against you. And you ask, who touched me? The woman, knowing that she was healed, came and fell at Jesus' feet, shaking with fear. She told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, dear woman, you are made well because you believed or because of your faith. Go in peace. Be healed of your disease. Now, let me ask a couple questions here. What did the woman hear, first of all, that caused her to come after Jesus? Well, it was the preached word. It was the gospel. It was people having seen Jesus demonstrate his power somehow or another. Now, you got to remember, there's no telephones. There's no telegraphs. You know, there's no formal lines of communication here. So it had to be from mouth to mouth, people talking all within themselves, talking about the great things that Jesus had. So the first thing in order to inspire faith is you have to hear the word. Not everything that you hear is the word of God. And you have to be able to distinguish between what's the word and what's somebody else's philosophy and their own intellectual reasonings. There is a difference. Now, what was the next thing? She heard about the word about the kingdom. She heard the word about Jesus. She had to have known that the claims were that he was the Messiah. She had to have known that the claims were that only the Messiah could heal. She had to have known this. Why? Because she was a daughter of Abraham. That's what Jesus called her. She was a student of the Levitical and the Mosaic law. She was a student of the things about her heritage as being a Jew. So with that being understood, we recognize that she was hearing now from Jesus. He was getting ready to tell her about the kingdom. In the kingdom, sins are forgiven. In the kingdom, people are healed. In the kingdom, compassion comes before legalism. Hallelujah. Legally, legally she shouldn't have been there. But compassion overrode that. Why? Because faith was in play. Faith was in play. So. Now, let's keep going. Now, I want you to just mark this. He didn't initiate the power flow, but her faith made her whole. Now, there's another guy here by the name of Jairus. Let's, let's keep reading so we can learn some things about him. Now, to get a better understanding, I want to back up just a little bit because I don't want you to forget how they came, came into meeting one another. Let's go back to verse 21, Mark 5. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him and he was nigh or near unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. He besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. I am praying to you. Come lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Right. And so then it goes on to say Jesus went with him. So he comes recognize he's a ruler of the synagogue. He recognizes Jesus has the power to heal. Now, religious people would say that, well, you know, because he was a ruler of the synagogue, he shouldn't have been on his knees. 
But faith people say that I don't care what I have to do to get Jesus' attention. If I have to get on my knees, if I have to raise my hands, if I have to shout with a loud voice, if I have to, you know, cry, I don't care what I have. I want Jesus' attention. That's faith in action. Faith in action will always get the attention of Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about ridiculous doing stuff just because your flesh wants to do something silly. My wife has a saying, you know, people that, you know, she said she doesn't, you know, uh, understand why people run around cluck like a chicken. Well, she's not talking about somebody that actually does it. What she's doing is metaphorically saying, you know, that people that just do any silly thing because they think it, it's, 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 it'll get them attention. Well, we're not trying to get the attention of people. We're trying to get, the, we're attempting to get the attention of Jesus. And I'm here to tell you that whatever you do in faith will always get the attention of Jesus. I don't care if other people don't like it. I don't care if people don't like the fact that you run around your church on a Sunday morning. They don't let you run in your church. Our church has plenty of people that like to run. Our church has plenty of people that like to just cry out to God and give him praise and thanksgiving, just like J. Iris did. Now, why is that? Because Jesus is meeting our needs. Jesus is healing our bodies. Jesus is, 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 is really managing our finances as we release our finances to him. Jesus is taking care of our relationships. He's restoring marriages that have been broken. He's bringing husband and wives together. Jesus is bringing our children back into the kingdom. They're being saved and set free and born again. That's the Jesus that we serve. Jesus is not, is not necessarily impressed at how quiet we can be in his presence. Jesus doesn't mind you being loud. There's many instances in scripture that show that. But what I'm here to tell you is it doesn't matter whether you're loud or whether you're quiet, whether you're short or whether you're tall. What matters is, do you have faith? Because faith is what unlocks the kingdom of God and what gives you access to that kingdom by faith. I'm preaching myself happy this morning. So let's keep going here. Let's skip down and read a little bit more about this gentleman by the name of Jairus. So we now see that this woman came and interrupted where Jesus was going. But can I tell you that it was not an interruption as much as it was a divine appointment. It was a divine appointment. And the Bible lets us know that because why? She got healed. She got healed. She got what she came after. So let's keep reading here. So let's go back to, down to verse 34, Mark 5, 34. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, and this is Jairus, okay? One of a, a, a messenger from Jairus' house has now shown up on the scene. So let's go back. I want to, again, Jesus is now walking. We have to believe that the multitude didn't just leave him, so the multitude, most of them, a good portion of them are probably walking with him. His disciples are with him. It's Jesus, the crowd, Jairus, the woman with the issue of blood, and now this gentleman shows up with a message. He's getting ready to show up and tell, tell uh, what he believes to be the truth. Let's say it that way. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, uh, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any longer? The Amplified Bible says this, while he was still speaking, there came some from the ruler's house who said to Jairus, your daughter has died. Why bother and distress the teacher any further. Now, do you think Jesus was distressed or bothered? I don't think so. I think Jesus was quite, quite calm and in control. He, was, he knew what the outcome was going to be. Jesus always knows what the outcome is. Oh, glory. Jesus knows that when you come to him with a need, he's got an answer. Jesus knows that no matter how big the need, there is always an answer. There is always a provision in the covenant that he has for us. That provision is he himself. Now I'm tapping me, but I, I'm saying as if Jesus was saying, he, I, am, I am the answer. How did he say it one day? He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And so Jesus knows that all power of heaven, God and that realm that, that he is a part of is available to him. So there's nothing that they could ever come to him and say that would cause him to be distressed. So let's keep going. Verse 36 says, as soon as Jairus heard the word, this is where I want to focus right now. Jairus heard something. The woman with the issue of blood heard something. The demon possessed man heard something. The disciples heard something and the crowd. But the difference in is, is this. It's not what you hear. It's what you attach your faith to. Glory to God. 
Let me say that again. It's not what you hear, it's what you attach your faith to. Because your faith must be attached to the right source. When we prayed this morning, when we started off, I said, Father, let us put a demand on heaven. We put a demand on heaven. What am I doing? I'm tapping my faith into the kingdom of God, believing that what God has for us today, we're going to hear through his word. So this same thing is true here, even at the time of this writing. God hasn't changed. The surroundings and the, 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 the environment and the centuries change. But God, the Bible says, is from everlasting to everlasting. He is the same God. Hallelujah. And so with this, this man heard the word, it says, that was spoken. He saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, as soon as, and now let me, let me back up. Verse 35, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, which said, thy daughter is dead, why troubles the master any further? Now 36 says this, as soon as Jesus heard the word, Jesus knew that the words that, he was, that, that these men were speaking, Although they were true in the natural and although they were true in their eyes, their understanding, they didn't know what was available to them because they were not using their faith. Glory to God. And so what happens is when Jesus heard the word, it says as soon as he heard it, that was spoken. He said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. I'm going to say it again. Be not afraid, he says to him. Only believe. In other words, I heard you when you asked me to heal your daughter, when you asked me to go with you. I know that this woman came and interrupted things, but she got what was hers, and you're going to get what's yours if you, as long, if you will just stay in faith. That's what believing means, have faith. Believe. So when you believe in what you ask for, glory to God, you get what you pray for, as long as it lines up with God's word. So he goes on to say, and he suffered the man to follow him, uh, no man, excuse me, to follow him except Peter and James and John. Here is where it gets very important to understand. Remember, all of these people that were there, I told you, you know, the, 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 the man who had been, uh, the demon possessed man was gone now, we believe. Now we've got the crowd, the throng that's around him. We've got his disciples. We've got Jairus. We've got the woman with the issue. She might now be on her way. Chances are she's probably so happy, she's probably stunned standing around. Who knows? We've got Jesus there. Jairus is there. And now we've got these messengers. What did Jesus begin to do now? Here in verse 37, he suffered no man to follow him except Peter and James. In other words, he allowed nobody to go with him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And it goes on to say, and he comes to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and sees the tumult. Let me read it from the Amplified Bible. When they arrived at the house of the ruler of the synagogue, he looked carefully and with understanding at the tumult and the people weeping and wailing loudly. Now listen to me. The Lord does this. Whenever you get in faith, you can't expect that everybody's going to be happy about the fact that you have faith in God or that you have faith to believe for something. Everybody's not gonna be your friend. There are people that don't invite me to their churches because they know I'm a faith preacher. There are some people that don't like being around me because I'm gonna talk faith. I'm going to live faith. My wife and I live by faith. The Bible says that the just, or the righteous, the just shall live by their faith. And so Jesus began to say, you know what? I only want these individuals with me now because now I am going to small, bring this group a little bit smaller we're going to go in here and there's less distractions when there's less people. Hallelujah. And so he begins to cut down the crowd, so to speak. And so his disciples, by virtue of their being with him, remember what we talked about in our lessons on discipleship. They were supposed to understand and know exactly what Jesus was going, where he was going and what was going to happen. Even if they didn't know how he was going to heal them, because Jesus didn't heal everybody the same way. So they didn't know how he was going to heal him, but these disciples should have known that, you know what? Hey, we've seen the master do this. We've seen Jesus do this. He's going to, look, this girl's going to get healed today. Now, I wonder if their faith was shaking, shaking a little bit because the, the message came that she was dead. Maybe, because they were human. These things happen, but your faith has to be in the master, not in the situation. Glory to God. Your faith has to be in Jesus. Your faith has to be in the kingdom of God, not in the situation that's going on around you. 
If I see, you know, if I see I've been on a boat, I've been on a ship, I've been on a canoe. And I like being on the ship better when waves are coming because the ship gives me more structure to be able to be on. But let me tell you something, that it doesn't matter the size of the boat or the size of the wave. What matters is that who controls the wave, who controls the sea. And Jesus proved that one day by standing up on the back of the boat and saying, peace, be still. So Jesus can still any circumstance in any situation around you. Glory to God. I hope you're enjoying this. Let's keep going. Verse 38, and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and sees the, the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. Verse 39, and when he was come in, he saith unto them, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel, is, the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Let's read from the Amplified Bible. And when he had gone in, he said to them, why do you make an uproar and weep? The little girl's not dead, but is sleeping. Let me keep reading from the Amplified. And they laughed and jeered at him. But he put them all out. <laughs> That's one of my chuckle scriptures in the Bible. He put them all out. And taking the child's father and mother and those who were with him, he went in where the little girl was lying. Now, do you see this? Imagine the Lord grabbing the mother and the father gently by the hand, saying, come on. And before he gets to that point, he's in there. These people that are in there, now many times there were professional wailers and moaners, and I don't know if this was the case there, but these people, all they want to do is, you know why they're wailing loudly? Because they want to be heard over everybody else. They, uh, you know, they're yelling and screaming and crying. Chances are they probably, you know, they probably, you know, had no real, you know, a, a connection to the little girl or certainly to Jairson's wife. Who knows? But, but was that comforting the mom? Because we see that the mother was there. Jairus was with Jesus. Was that comforting the mother? They're wailing? Nah. Nah. I, as a person who has had a child precede them in, in, in death, I know that weeping and wailing doesn't do, didn't do any good. I needed, I needed the touch of, of Jesus, of the master. Okay? So we see Jesus gently grabbing them by the hand, saying, come on. Come on, let's go in here. And so he says, uh, gripping, uh, let me back up. He put them all out. That's a, I like that. God said, get out. Told him, get out. Taking the child's father and mother and, and those who were with him, he went in where the little girl was lying, gripping her firmly, verse 41 says, by the hand, he said to her, Talatha kuma, which translated is, little girl, I say to you, arise from the sleep of death. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And instantly the girl got up and started walking around, for she was 12 years old. And they were utterly astonished and overcome with amazement. And he strictly commanded and warned them that no one should know this. And he expressly told them to give her something to eat. Glory to God. Let me read this from the King James Version. Verse 40. They laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, then he took the father and the mother of the damsel and then them that were with him and entereth in where the damsel was lying. He took the damsel by the hand, said unto her, Talitha kuma, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto, uh, unto thee, arise from the sleep of death. Straightway or immediately she got up and walked for she was 12 years old. They were astonished, greatly astonished, it says, and with a great astonishment. And he told them, don't tell anybody about this, but rather he told them, get this girl something to eat. Can you tell me that is getting the job done? And it all happened because Jairus had faith. Jairus had faith. The woman who got received her, her miracle with the issue of blood for 12 years got her miracle because she had faith. Now I want to take you to one last passage of scripture here or two if I have time. But uh, I just want you to uh, I want you to hear this. Let's turn over to Hebrews in your Bibles. Uh, turn over with me. Glory to God. Um, let me find where I want, because I want to make sure you see this in your own Bible, because you you if I say it, you'll hear it and you might receive it a little bit. But, you know, I want you to know that it is for you to understand and get into your Bible, learning your Bible and understanding how much God has for you in his word. Turn over to uh, uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And we're going to close with this, this passage of Scripture. I just want to kind of wet your whistle and just doing an introductory thing here and 
just letting the Holy Spirit lead me as he takes me through these scriptures. Hebrews 11, verse 1. I'm reading from the uh, King James Version. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Do you see that? Word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It goes on to list certain things. But the, thing, uh, the things with Abel and Enoch. Let's go down to verse 6 for sake of time. But without faith, now I've, I've said this and alluded to this a couple different times, but now I'm reading it to you. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who's him? God. For he that com cometh to God must believe or have faith that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you see that? Do you see that? Let's read Hebrews 6 and 1 from the Amplified Bible. But without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him. Now, I'm going to read this from one last translation and I'm going to pray with you and I'm going to pray today that your faith grows exceedingly. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, my praying for your faith to grow exceedingly, it only opens the door for your mind to believe that it can. But what it, what's really going to do it? is you hearing the word of God. Let's read this real quick. Verse, same, same chapter 6. Um, glory to God, excuse me. Ver, chapter 11. I'm at the wrong place. Got to get over here. Chapter 11, verse 6. It says, And without faith no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is real and that he rewards those who truly want to find him. Is that you today? Do you truly want to find him? Now, the reward that he's going to give you, don't get it twisted. The reward that he wants to give you is access to the kingdom. Anything in the kingdom you can have. J. Iris got healing for his daughter. The woman with the issue of blood got healing for her body. And many others, as we'll get, as we study this, these scriptures on faith, you'll begin to see got what they believe God for. What do you believe in God for today? I encourage you to go to a local church. Find some place to worship. Find some place that teaches the Bible and learn more and hear the word of God continually. God bless you. Until next time on Wherever He Leads. We want to thank you for joining in with us today. We want to take an opportunity to give you uh, a chance to sow or to bless this ministry, this television ministry. If it blessed you, we certainly appreciate that. One way to give is online at our website experience the point with an e.com that's experience the point with an e.com or you can mail to us at p.o box 337 that's p.o box 337 tiffin iowa 52340 thank you and god bless you